every activity will require a certain amount of effort in the form of force or maybe pressure. If you open a pack of chips with the same force with which you push the heavy chair, the packet is going to tear wide open and all the chips will fall out, isn't it? Often it is found that whenever we lift a box, pull a door, push someone, shut a door, uh, open a book, kick a football, pick an object, sit on a chair, etc. These actions are accomplished either by push or pull in motion. We could see when two bodies interact, a push or pull comes to play and there could even be a change in the direction of motion. So force is the push or pull the body undergoes when two bodies undergo interaction with each other. Force is hence defined as the physical cause that changes or tends to change the dimensions or the state of rest or the state of motion of a body. Now tell me something, is force visible? No, one cannot see force but we only see the effect it has on an object or person. One can see what force does. So force can change the speed of something, the direction in which it is moving, the shape of an object or it can move an object from its position of rest. For example, an elastic band gets longer if you pull it or if you kick a ball at rest, it will move from that position and travel a certain distance depending upon the force applied. I mean, how hard can you kick? You know that gravity can be measured, isn't it? It has a constant value to it. It is essentially called the gravitational force. So, how does one measure force? A force meter is used to measure forces. Force meters contain a spring connected to a metal hook. The spring stretches when a force is applied to the hook. The bigger the force applied, the longer the string stretches and the higher is the reading. So the unit of force is called the Newton and is denoted by capital N. Obviously named after Isaac Newton who discovered gravity. So to put it most simply, a force of 100 Newton is greater than a force of 5 Newton. Okay, imagine this. Your dad is trying to start the car and is unable to do so. Now, if his friend just goes and stands behind the car, will that help in any way to push the car? Of course not. Your dad's friend will need to push the car. And the car may then move in the direction in which the force is applied. Shall I give you a few more examples? Okay. Take a look at this picture. You can see that both the girls are trying to push each other. And the one who is stronger will succeed in pushing the other one. Now, if you look at the cow and the man here, you will see that the man is trying to pull the cow and the cow is fighting back and pulling herself in the opposite direction. What we can thus infer from these scenarios is that at least two objects must interact for a force to come into play. When the earth revolves around the sun and the moon in turn revolves around the earth, they move in their fixed orbits. And because of the pull of the earth on the moon, it revolves around it. Although the force is so high, that these planetary bodies need not come in contact with one another at all. Well, there is a type of force involved here too, but more on that later. Moving on, let us explore some more aspects related to force. A force has both magnitude and direction. The strength of a force is expressed by its magnitude. But to completely determine a force, we need to specify both direction and magnitude. Because as the direction or magnitude of the applied force changes, its effect changes too. Shall I give you an example? Okay. Take a heavy object, say take a table or a big box that you can push only with a lot of force. Now, try pushing this all by yourself. 
Were you able to push it? Oh, maybe yes, maybe a little, maybe not at all. Now ask one of your friends to help you in pushing it in the same direction. What do you observe? That when you both apply force together at the same time to move it, the task becomes much easier, isn't it? Now what if you push the box in one direction and your friend applies force from the other direction? Does the object move? Again, it may or it may not, depending on which one of you is applying more force. In the first scenario, forces applied on an object in the same direction add to one another. So the net force in this case will be the summation of the forces and pushing the box becomes easier or the table, whichever one you're pushing. On the other hand, in the second scenario, forces are applied on an object in opposite directions. So the net force will be the difference of both the forces. If you are stronger, you've had good breakfast and you've applied more force, you will push the box in your friend's direction or vice versa. And that brings me to the definition of net or resultant force. Net or resultant force is the difference between the two forces acting in opposite directions on an object. In other words, the net force is the overall force acting on one object. Let me explain how resultant force works. Let's look at two scenarios. Have you played a game called tug of war? Now, uh, you know, in which they grab the rope and two opposite teams are pulling. Now, if two equally matched teams play this game, neither one of the teams will be able to pull the opposite team on their side. And this means that when two forces act in opposite directions on a body with equal size or magnitude, the body continues to be in its position. Or if it is in motion, it may continue to move with the same speed and in the same direction. Thus, the net force acting on the object is zero. This type of force is known as balanced force. So what happens in the case of unbalanced forces? Take a look at this image. You can see that the person on the right is much fatter than the one on the left. So the seesaw has tilted towards the heavier person. This is an example of two unbalanced forces. Basically, in an unbalanced force, a body changes its position. In an unbalanced force, we can observe a moving object changing its direction. The speed of a continuously moving object may either increase or decrease and a body at rest starts to move or a body in motion may come to rest. In general, more than one force may be acting on an object. However, the effect on the object is due to the net force acting on it. Simple enough up till now, I hope. So we have looked at how forces can act in opposite directions, in the same direction, and how this affects the net force acting on an object. Now let's look at some of the effects of forces. So great, we have looked at the various concepts under force. So join me in the next segment and we shall learn a new subtopic of this chapter. See you soon. Bye. Tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.